चक्रूपेण मच्छि पंकृतमूर्तया किंकय शंकराचार्यश्रिए नमस्ते गुड इवनिंग I'm at a loss of words when I see such towering giants sitting in front of me. Today's speaker, Padma Bhushan. डॉक्टर मृत्युंजय यात्रेय इज द भीष्म पितामह द आर्किटेक्ट दिवान प्रॉबेबली can be considered the founding fathers of the indian management movement and it is our privilege at tatva loka to have such a deep relationship with him i got to know today that he was the first indian to have earned a phd in management from harvard experience with the world of economics and business what has his what has been his learnings from his careers from his career as a management consultant advisor guru what is the wisdom that he has gained in his life through his career in what direction should our business leaders proceed to speak about that i requested dr atreya and gave him a very perfect perfect flexing topic the dharma of our dana chakra the capital that we own is indeed the capital that we give that is the true capital that sustains us in this world and in the next we have too much noise in the media today about philanthropy about charity corporate social responsibility everybody knows 
that is their responsibility <coughs> but to what extent is it executed so these are some questions to which i look forward to getting an answer from dr atriya today without much ado i invite dr atriya to the stage and also request <coughs> chairman emeritus tatvaloka shri t r ramachandran to come and honor dr atriya the shop Serve society, uh, because however much we may invest in health, education, 
uh, skill training and so on, there will always be a certain percentage who will fall behind. It is inevitable to compare the numbers of human beings that we have and the distribution of abilities, uh, aptitudes and so on. Uh, and the wheel of life will also be going up and down. Uh, so one will not be permanently strong or wealthy, uh, one will not be permanently poor uh, and unwell. <clears throat> so how to keep this wheel moving, that is part of the design of this presentation. Uh, and uh, I'd like to thank Patwaroka for giving me a platform. Every time I come to South, somewhere in the, either directly to Chennai, or this time I'm coming from Coimbatore, where I had a, an event for which we had to go. So I had earlier planned to be here, uh, I think for this talk to be on the 6th October, and at that time there was a storm warning which was withdrawn later, but it was so serious uh, that uh, we postponed it, and I gave this day immediately thereafter. <coughs> Well, so this is a structure that uh, I begin with the point I made earlier that Dhanam is an essential part of the Hindu culture. Uh, it's also seen in some other religious uh, cultures, uh, but here it is explicitly uh, mentioned as one of the duties uh, of, uh, in life uh, and also the uh, part of the Sattvic Guna. And in this, uh, the model of Dhanam has a number of participants. Uh, of course, the initiator of this chakra is the dani, the donor. And therefore, we have to uh, create the consciousness, awareness, commitment uh, to give dhanam among those who are capable of doing so, uh, according to their capacity. <coughs> this system is a struggle because the purusharthas, among the four purusharthas, dharmartha, kama, moksha, the most dominant one in all cultures, including ours, despite this age old, Civilization is karma, and uh, modern economists uh, have uh, understood this and collaborated this, that uh, there is no end to desires. Uh, real human wants are few, but the desire uh, is endless. And therefore the potential donor can always find some reason, rationalization to spend it on himself, his immediate family, uh, something for his own future security, and avoid uh, the pain of uh, parting with it as much as possible. Uh, that's one of the reasons why the government of India uh, eventually felt that corporate social responsibility must be legislated and they have not done it indiscriminately. Companies above a certain level of capital investment, profit, only on them this obligation is put, uh, 2%. Now, uh, Indian companies have generally, after some initial uh, question that should be, should be legislated or be voluntary. Uh, I have by and large accepted that this is part of the culture of our country. This is something that we ought to do. And we are now going about in the last few years finding out how best to spend this 2%. Some of them are uh, too focused on their own personal image, uh, their uh, reach, what business benefits they can get from this 2% CSR. Some others are moving towards addressing the real social deficits and problems in the country. So what is, what is the role of the donor, uh, the dani in this cycle? The second, uh, the receiver also has a responsibility. It is not as if the uh, don doni, the receiver, uh, is a passive beneficiary uh, who can simply receive the dana, benefit from it, and uh, not, not have any additional uh, responsibilities. That there are responsibilities on the donor as well. And then nowadays we have institutional uh, uh, donors as well as uh, recipients. So in the receiving organization, it, it is not a simple uh, alms giving outside a temple or a pilgrimage spot. It is being given a large sum to an organization which is specializing professionally in taking care of many poor or many needy in various fields. Uh, typically uh, health to begin with, education, employment, and later on as, uh, old age care, various kinds of illnesses, disabilities, and so on. <clears throat> so each of those karmacharis working there are liable to certain kind of anti attitudinal weaknesses, the problems of the ego, the ahankar. It is as if they are giving the dhanam rather than the donor <laughs> who is giving the dhanam to the organization. 
So I think when the donor will be very generous and very positive uh, and wanting to give it without feeling in any way arrogant, the intermediate organization is susceptible. This happens in many government programs uh, where the bureaucracy, middle lower level, uh, is in fact the stumbling block. Very good ideas, schemes, uh, uh, if they are badly implemented, they don't get the kind of impact uh, that is uh, expected. <clears throat> there is also a dharma for the final recipients or beneficiaries. So the donee sometimes is also the beneficiary if it's an individual, but if the donee receiver is an organization, then they are playing a delivery intermediate role to the final beneficiaries who have to get this. It may be either the state-related uh, delivery or a privately funded uh, delivery through philanthropy. Therefore, these various uh, individuals and organizations have to be uh, welded together. And that is the idea of Dana Chakra, the wheel. And the question is, what is their relative responsibilities? And the dharma of each one of them is what I am dealing with in this presentation. So, Dhanam in Hindu culture, this is a typical picture that when people move beyond Karastashrama into Vanaprastha and into Sanyasa, some do it early in life. Uh, Swami Dhyaranya, who spoke here yesterday, uh, took his Sanyasa at the age of 14. Alshankara uh, did it even earlier. Uh, the, the duty of the householder is to take care of uh, all the such Sanyasis uh, who come for Viksha. And it is a great honor to be able to do big shop and uh, uh, get their blessings. <clears throat> so the, the the role of Dharma in Hindu culture uh, is uh, uh, in, at various levels. The kings were the largest natural uh, donors. The, the, the Dharma of every Raja uh, is to take care not of his own personal pleasure, glory, wars and victories uh, and so on. Uh, rather to defend the kingdom without aggression, uh, but look, uh, look after all the people through all the seasons, through the ups and downs, droughts, uh, quakes, and various natural disasters that may take place. <clears throat> the, then there are great role models, uh, ideals of uh, Dhanam, uh, like Karna in uh, Mahabharata, uh, who are known for their great generosity and who give until it threatens their own uh, health and existence, survival, uh, without any regard for personal uh, safety and uh, enjoyment. <clears throat> the, the Vaishya Dharma of the business community, uh, which Gandhiji drew upon later, is that the, that Dharma is to be trustees of the wealth, not act as uh, personal uh, owners of it who can deal with it at their whim and fancy, uh, be partial to their own family, children, cousins and so on. Many of the business uh, men in the uh, last few generations may have deviated from it, but that's a human fault and it doesn't invalidate the dharma. Ideals, models, norms should always be kept in the purest state possible and it should be the human endeavor to bridge the gaps, not use somebody's failure as a justification or rationalization but to give up fundamentally the valid concept. Uh, uh, for example, rising from tamas to sattva, uh, 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 making dharma the number one objective and only enjoying those karma which are dharma aviruddha karma. These are fundamental truths uh, and they are valid for all times and civilizations and human beings, even if they are, must be helped to come back from that, do uh, there is always room for correction and improvement. <clears throat> so it is not only the Raja, uh, the Vaishya, uh, but the Grihastashrama also has this duty of Dhanam. They may not give as much as uh, the Vaishya, who has uh, profit which is growing with population and business. Uh, Grihastashrama also, the income nowadays is growing for those who are doing well. Uh, and in fact, uh, rather than that money, that enough of the money going into Dhanam, the financial investment industry is very active, aggressively active, very creative. They are after these what are called HNIs, high net worth individuals. They track their income and they quickly grab a large share of it for investment uh, and their own fees 
and, and their bonuses and so on. So I think the uh, uh, people who need them cannot match the skills of the uh, financial services industry. Therefore, the uh, individuals themselves who have high income should be aware of their responsibility. And the idea of the Grahasthashrama Dharma is that the way the grandparents do it should be a model which influences the parents, and the way the parents do it should influence the children, and the way the children do it should influence the grandchildren, and that is the kind of uh, cycle that should go within the family. <coughs> uh, it also happens that sometimes when uh, parents are extremely self-centered, at some point or the other, the children become more aware, and they don't want to benefit from this excessive self. They themselves may be critical uh, of their parents being too uh, tight fisted and they could. So I think Dharma works in various ways, uh, including that even wrong examples at some point lead to insights and the right kind of action. <clears throat> so beyond the family as a unit, every individual member of the family, everyone has to chalk out his or her own path uh, to moksha. And whoever that individual, whatever the income level, uh, the dhanam is a very important uh, element uh, in the path to moksha. Before they get ultimate moksha in life, they should be able to release themselves from the bondage of wealth, ownership, uh, and the desires it generates. There must be a, a, a level of satiation and uh, maturity to see the ill effects of excessive consumption. So this uh, Hindu culture is summarized beautifully uh, in the Gita, in the later chapters, and the different kinds of dhanam, which you are familiar with, the tamasik, rajasik, and the sattvic dhanam, the highest being without expecting any rewards in return, giving it to those patratva, bhikshamdehi, who deserve it and need it most. So uh, this dharma concept is getting reflected in the language of modern uh, social sciences, in economics, for example, uh, the poorest of the poor is a very useful phrase that foundations like Ford, Rockefeller, uh, and Gates Foundation found out that we must teach the most needy uh, among these various categories. So, uh, dhanam is uh, an injunction for all those who have more than they need, more than is good for them, to share some part of it. Uh, let's take now the receiver, uh, the, the, the doer actually who uh, does the dharma, which is part of the uh, culture of dharma. <coughs> Nowadays it is taking organizational shape. I think this was uh, Rogi's interest, Dr. Roga's interest, that uh, our shastras primarily we talk about the individual uh, dharma as a private responsibility, which is, which is very valid. And now we are uh, seeing organizations like foundations and trusts which are legally incorporated and therefore as organizations they are interested with much more funds than is available to single individuals uh, and this give pledge movement around the world uh, where people are giving 50% or more of their ultimate savings leaving enough for their family uh, would, would create huge corpus of funds and interest income on those funds some of them also invest uh, in uh, responsible business. Uh, so their impact on philanthropy can be much higher if they do it strategically uh, and uh, uh, on the basis of dharma. They follow the dharma of the most deserving, most neglected, orphan needs of society. Uh, and uh, the, 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 they need to uh, reach out and invite prospective donors to come up with the right kind of uh, uh, programs, projects, uh, ideas, uh, their analysis of the uh, needs in society. Uh, uh, so rather than wait reactively for people to appeal to them and scatter funds here and there, the donor organizations need to have a strategy, need to have a set of priorities and accordingly look for. So it is not only that you come and get from me what you need, but rather to do their own research and find out, I must make sure that this wealth must be given in the most beneficial way to society. So they have to search for deserving donees. And now the uh, management of philanthropy 
uh, I think this is a contribution of modern management, that uh, it is not enough to do something satisfactorily. Uh, the concept of optimization is very important. Uh, we cannot do maximization, uh, which will be a Rajasic kind of effort, that uh, within competing needs, uh, how we can reconcile needs of health, education, employment, uh, now climate change, mitigation, uh, newer kinds of illnesses, old age care. Uh, so various demands will keep coming up uh, and uh, there is a need to analyze them uh, and uh, give it to the most deserving. Thereafter, giving money even to deserving is not a guarantee that it will be perfectly spent. <clears throat> Therefore, the total organization dharma extends to being a mentor, guide, coach. Uh, that's, one, that's a positive side of the role. On the other side, they also have a right and a duty to monitor how well it is spent and detect waste, inefficiency, neglect, or even leakages earlier on. Not to withdraw the dhana, but to improve the performance of the Tony organization uh, and transfer education, learning about philanthropy from one dollar to the other, and from one sector to another, one country to another. Now the, uh, uh, the donors organizations themselves have become multinational. The process of globalization is not only multinational companies or federations like the EU and ASEAN, it's also taking place in the uh, philanthropy sector. <clears throat> now the receiver uh, also has a demo and uh, modern management helps us to refine this and focus uh, the main tasks that uh, uh, if you are in an NGO which is looking for and receiving dana on behalf of beneficiaries, uh, you have a responsibility to focus on a mission, not do many things and do them inefficiently, but uh, doing many things is more an ego trip. Uh, to be able to say that my NGO does lots of different varieties of things is doing it well is the question. So I think we find that those NGOs which focus on either health, education, regional development or uh, agriculture uh, uh, or some other specific aspect, uh, culture, architecture, preservation of antique, antiquities. Uh, so there are many things that uh, are necessary in the society. It's not by bread alone. They need to have a mission which means that what exactly is the area they will focus on, where they will develop in-depth expertise. Uh, they will know the field very well, what kind of dana is needed, how it should be delivered, uh, and how well we can get a mileage out of it. And then they should also have not a small ambition, because the population of the world, the poor population, especially in a country like India, uh, is so large, so even if the poverty percentage declines, the absolute numbers will still continue to be high. So they have to have some appetite for growth. So the donor's dharma is to give to that kind of donor organization, which will not be small scale and be uh, satisfied with a limited amount of budget, but will aspire to grow and therefore uh, do the necessary uh, manpower planning systems and so on uh, to achieve that vision. They should keep building their organizational capacity. So the many donor organizations uh, wait for funds and then look for the people. But they should be able to, uh, they, they will not earn dividends or profits, but they should be able to keep, create a reserve, a general reserve for the various projects. They're, they're entitled to a 10%, 12% administrative fee on the amount that the donor is giving. Out of that, they should be uh, developing some reserve for which they will recruit, train, uh, develop people. And then on that capacity, they can make a stronger case for the next big uh, donation. <clears throat> so through these processes of mission, mission, organizational capacity, they inspire the confidence of the donors. And it, the, the, it should be that donors are chasing uh, deserving donor organizations uh, rather than the other way around. And uh, as they grow, uh, the donor organizations also are liable to the normal problems of human and organizational illness, that is ego, uh, hankar, overconfidence. Uh, they need to be uh, at all times uh, looking at themselves as servers 
of the beneficiaries and how well they can render the efficient service without any kind of condescension or feeling of superiority, uh, looking down with pity for the beneficiaries. Their role primarily is that of a conduit, a link in this chakra uh, to the beneficiaries. And if there were no beneficiaries, there is no Dodi organization. Their own uh, income, career, satisfaction depends on the ability. So they need to uh, deal with the beneficiaries almost as if they were customers. Uh, the fact that they are not paying a full price uh, is not relevant. Uh, it should be relevant. That's the ideal uh, role for a, a NGO uh, delivering service or a civil service at the lower levels of the bureaucracy. <coughs> so in this process they should achieve uh, uh, the quality, uh, the image that this is a good patra. Patratva Bhiksham Dehi. So every uh, delivery NGO should become a valued, respected, a good patra into which other people want to put their funds because for them to themselves manage these projects would be difficult. <clears throat> now let us take those who are working for a salary, who are just employees. Uh, now in the case of a business enterprise, the employees are made aware very clearly that your salary, bonus, rise depends upon the company's growth of revenue and profits and the revenues from the front come from the customer. Customer is king or queen. The customer is the first stakeholder, uh, the investor, uh, the business partners, vendors, dealers, they come later. So this is drilled into them and therefore a enlightened self-interest demands that they will look after the customer. But in the case of a Dhoni organization, uh, an NGO doing service, uh, they can take the feeling that uh, without us, these people will be on the roads. It is because of us that they are getting these funds and a certain amount of arrogance. Uh, and they will exist with the donors even if there is some dissatisfaction among the beneficiaries. All the people, whether in the profit sector or non profit sector, begin their careers as the karmacharis, whether it is the uh, pure or the chairman, uh, whether it is the field level worker in an NGO or the CEO of the NGO, all of us begin our life as karmachari, which means that we work primarily to get a pay packet at the end of the month so that we can look after the family, our basic needs and so on. <clears throat> the great transition that our dharma uh, invites people to do is as early as possible, stop being a karmachari and look at yourself as a karma yogi, that this is something that you enjoy doing, it is worth doing and you get, get great spiritual satisfaction the material compensation comes along with that, adequate, quite uh, satisfactory. Uh, but